We're here with a Cessna 335, which is very similar to the 340, except for that it's an unpressurized uh, uh, aircraft. Looks the same, but it's unpressurized. Uh, installed right now is a CND replacement for the Southwind heater. The 8259 that was originally pulled out of this aircraft was replaced with a CND 14077, another one of our PMA replacements. Um, we've just done a test flight with this. The customer was complaining of uh, having problems in flight with the heater staying in operation. We made some adjustments to the heater, but we've also found, uh, as we found in some of the 400 series uh, Cessnas, there's a fuel control problem. And what's happening is because if the heater pulls fuel from the cross feed, uh, some of these serial numbers we're finding actually boost the pressure to the heater as well. And there's no regulator uh, where the fuel source is, it's just a shutoff valve. So uh, the course of action right now, there's a fuel pump that sits right behind the combustion air blower. Um, we're going to uh, remove that and we're going to put a, a high pressure fuel pump and a regulator valve out in the wing route to stabilize the pressure uh, from the aircraft. The, the aircraft boosts the pressure up about 10, 15 pounds. And what will happen is you can check this easily if your aircraft is affected by this by teeing in a fuel gauge between the heater and the, uh, the fuel supply hit your boost pumps and if the boost pressure goes up uh, obviously you're, you're pulling from a pressurized cross feed line uh, and the fuel system needs to be regulated before it gets to the heater and the main reason for that is because atomization through the nozzle is not happening properly and uh, instead of having a nice sheet action from the nozzle it atomizes closer and many times what will happen is because of the higher pressure air growing through the combustion chamber through the inlet and out the exhaust, uh, it just pulls the atomized fuel straight out the exhaust and it never touches the spark plug. So it's a problem that we're finding with, with some of these Cessnas uh, uh, that we, we weren't aware of up till probably about five years ago we found it for the first time. Um, the fuel pump and regulator will be a PMA item uh, once we're done here uh, and that should address and fix the problems. A lot of these Cessnas you'll find that the, the heaters have been replaced multiple times through the years and uh, if that's the case, it probably has to do with this, uh, this fuel system issue. So, Kara, uh, you can see here, um, if you are working on a 340, we've done troubleshooting yeah, with the 340s before. Uh, you have a simple exhaust pipe and an air intake. And if we did our troubleshooting one-on-one -on -one again, we know that we can use the exhaust pipe to smell for fuel and feel for airflow from the combustion heater, uh, make sure it's pulling from the intake so that you, that'll tell you whether there's some skeet a uh, hose collapsed or seat hose collapsed uh, or if there's an obstruction in there and then you'll also be able to hear the ignition inside of the exhaust pipe so as we talked about in our 101 troubleshooting you need uh, you need fuel you need air and you need spark those three components for proper heater operation um, other than that it's pretty straightforward installation and uh, you can see uh, if you look to the side a little bit of carbon tracking right there that's pretty normal on our systems um, but you shouldn't see it aft of the exhaust. Uh, this one's a little different because the belly's painted a dark color, so it's hard to see sometimes. So a lot of, if you have a dark colored belly, it's good to just come in and wipe your hand across the belly to see uh, if it's leaving a carbon trail within the first foot or so. This one, as you can see, uh, the time that they ran it for about a half hour uh, seemed like it was burning clean.